Shout hallelujah. The Lord is good all the time. What we're, we're going to go into a season, a, a session of prayer right now. But before we go into the prayers, I would like to read one or two verses of the Bible. The Bible is speaking in Psalm 90, verse 17. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. This year has been declared as a year of achievement and one of the things that the Lord is going to do for us is that we establish the work of our hands. The Bible said it affirmatively, it said yes, establish the work of our hands. In Proverbs chapter 12 verse 2, the Bible says, A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of evil devices he condemns. I decree in the name of Jesus that the Lord will condemn everyone that is devising evil against the work of your hands this year in Jesus' name. We're going to open our mouth and begin to pray. We will say, Father, every evil counsel and the vices of the enemy against my favor this year, against my advancement this year, Father, begin to destroy them. Let them fail. After the order of Ahitophel, let them fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I decree that every evil counsel of the enemy against my life, every advice of the evil ones, every devices of the enemy against my favor this year, against my advancement this year, against my blessings this year, against my achievement this year, I decree in the name of Jesus that they begin to fail. Let them begin to fail. Let them begin to fail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. After the order of I to fail, every evil devices of the enemy against me, against my household, against the work of my hands, against my progress this year begins to fail. In the mighty name of Jesus, they begin to fail in the name of Jesus. They begin to fail in the name of Jesus. Every evil devices of the enemy against my life fails. Every evil counsel of the enemy against my life fails. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the work of my hands prospers this year. The work of my hands prospers this year. The work of my hands prospers this year. The work of our hands prospers this year in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Evil devices Lord, of the decree, enemy. Oh God, is in the name of Jesus, that the work of my hand prospers this year in the name of Jesus. Every evil the voices of the enemy against me upon prosper fails this year. in the name of Jesus. In the name of fails Jesus. Name of Whatever Jesus. I lay my hands upon Jesus name prosper we in the name prayed. of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We are going to pray for this anointing of favor from God. You will say, my, my anointing of favor, my life is available for you this year. Anointing of favor, my anointing life is available favor, for you. I am available for you this year. Anointing of say, favor, my favor is available for you. Anoint me with your favor. Father, this anoint year. me with your Open favor. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus. 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 Father, in the name of
Abundance of Jata Pali Adonza, the grace of God speaks for me. In my endeavors, the grace of God speaks for me. Madisha Tali Adonza, the mercy of God speaks for me. Favor of God speaks for me. Madisha Tali Adonza, Kataba, the loving kindness of God speaks for me. In the name of Jesus, Madisha Lida Bon Jata Pali Kadeza Taba, Madisha Kadu Shata Pali Adonza, Kataba Kadeza, Madisha Kete Bon Shata Pali Adonza. Favor speaks for me. 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 Be destroyed in the name Every of Jesus. Every eating hindrance to my prosperity in this year be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every eating hindrance. Every eating hindrance. Every eating obstacle. Every eating obstacle. To my prosperity. To my prosperity this year, be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and turn that into prayer. Oh Father, 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 I decree and I declare, oh God, every eating hindrance, oh God, to my prosperity, every eating obstacle, oh God, to my prosperity. Today I put an hand to you. Ah, shada baleka loza tizi da balia deza kapalia dosha. I put an hand to you, oh God. Mata pali adosa teke de bosha. According to your word, over my family be destroyed. Over my children be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, every eating and being good health, every eating of circles, so my prosperity this year, so my blessings this year, so my joy this year, so my advancement this year, so my achievement this year, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I pull you down. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pull you down. In the name of Jesus, my lips are not going to be able to stand up. My lips are not going to be able to stand up. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says every tree that my father has not planted shall be uprooted. Let everything that my father has no hands be removed. Let me be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, and so shall it be. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin to achieve this year, we want to pray for divine protection, because you know sometimes the devil can be very corny. When he sees that you are getting there, he comes in his very corny way and cut it short. You will say, Father, as I achieve this year, as I advance this year, Father, as I advance this year, divine protection covers me. Divine protection, Your divine protection. Covers me. Divine Your divine protection me, covers my family. Your divine protection, Your divine protection covers, covers the work of my hands. Hey, Your divine Father, protection covers my prosperity. Your divine protection covers my posterity. Your divine protection covers my life. Your divine protection covers my success. Open your mouth and begin to pray. From glory to glory this year, as I advance from glory to glory this year, Lord, I decree that Your divine protection covers me. Your divine protection be my shield. Your divine protection covers me all around. Covers my family. Covers my children. Covers the work of my hands. Your divine protection covers my prosperity. Your divine protection covers my prosperity. Your divine protection covers my success. Covers my breakthrough. Covers my glory. In the name of Jesus. Protection from above. 
Lastly, we are going to say, Father, I enter into the covenant of prosperity, of prosperity and abundance with you this year. Father, I enter into the covenant of I prosperity and abundance. Covenant. I enter into the covenant, covenant of prosperity, of prosperity, of prosperity, of abundance, of abundance this year. This year, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, once again, you say, Father, Father, I enter, I enter into the covenant, into the covenant of prosperity, of prosperity, into the covenant, into the covenant of abundance, of abundance with you this year, with you this Open year. Open your mouth and begin to declare, Father, in the name, Father, in the name of, of Jesus, Jesus, oh God, I enter, oh God, into, the I enter into the covenant of prosperity, of prosperity in the with you this year. I enter into the covenant of abundance with you this year. In the name of Jesus, I begin to move from glory to glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I enter into the covenant for abundance with you. I enter into the covenant for prosperity with you this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will never know a better yesterday. I will never know a better yesterday. Every day becomes new for me. Every day brings success for me. Every day brings abundance for me. Every day brings prosperity for me. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. My family is blessed. Everything that concerns me is blessed. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. I enter with my name Turn into tongues. It's Begin to blast the tongues. Covenant. Begin to blast the tongues. Neba leda raba ba sanda ya ba shanda rebo bobo. Neba leke de rebo zunda ri ba leke de rebo shanda ri kata ya baba. Begin to confuse the enemy tongues. Confuse the enemy tongues. La ri kata ya ba sanda raba. Ma leda ri ba leke de rebo zunda ri ba kata ya ke zende rebo. Ma li ba kalu da ri ba ke tseye bo zinda ra. Le brama ri ke Jesus shall be possible in the life of every member of this church Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We enter into the covenant of prosperity with you, God. Amen. And we decree that as we walk this year, our work, the work of our hands will bring success. Amen. The work of our hands will bring prosperity. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Anywhere that we we'll step into shall be given unto us as our possession. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Wherever our hands touches is blessed. Amen. Everything concerning us is blessed. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. By your mercy, O oh God, you will open great doors of prosperity for every member of the church. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Anywhere that we go, divine protection covers us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We cover our prayers with the blood of Jesus. Lord of we cover Jesus. the church with the blood of Jesus. Lord of we Jesus. cover our children with the blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus. And so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, welcome to the continuation of our Bible study series. We have, we've been studying the book of First Timothy. And today we'll proceed to First Timothy chapter 5. I pray for you, the entrance of God's word today in your life will bring light in the name of Jesus. Amen. And it will bring understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything, every part in your life that seemed dark, you begin to gain understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. They become solved, every problem in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you listen, I pray. 
that the spirit of God's understanding come upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So, I'll be reading through the book of First Timothy chapter 5. And um, we will study it. What it says. What is in it. Um, this book, this chapter, chapter 5, is broken into three major parts. The first part talks about treatment of church members. Treatment of members in the church. How you treat members in the church. And the second part talks about honoring widows, honoring true widows. Hallelujah. While the third part talks about honor the elders, how we honor the elders in the church. God bless you as, you as you go on with me. In the name of Jesus. I'll read from verse 1. Do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father. Do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father. Younger men as brothers. Older women as mothers. Younger women as sisters with all purity. I'll read it again. Do not rebuke an older man, but exalt him as a father. Younger men as brothers. Older women as mothers. Younger women as sisters with all purity. Now, what this passage is trying to make us understand is that leadership starts at home. Leadership starts at home. You first learn to relate with family before the outside world. Before you became the minister of God that you were, that you are, you were or you grew out of a family. Before you become the head of departments that you are, you came out of one family. Before you enter into that leadership position that you are occupying right now, you belonged to one family. So you are expected to have learned how to relate from that home that you came out of. Hallelujah. So for this Bible passage, to, to refer or to tell us to treat people like we would have treated our own people. It says, do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father. So for you to be able to treat an older man, it means you must have experienced what it's like to have a father. And you must know how it is to relate with a father figure. Or else it will be difficult to do the right thing. Respect must be paid to the dignity of years and place. Respect must be placed, must be paid to the dignity of years and place. If you have not had a father figure, it will be difficult for you to respect an older person when you are treating them. When you are scolding them. The younger, if faulty, must be rebuked, not as serious to find fault with them, but as willing to make the best of them. But as willing to do what? To make the best out of them. Sometimes this week, I, um, last week, I put on my status on WhatsApp that I am attracted to intelligence. And it's true. When I was much younger, if I don't find intelligence in the person, 
or I don't see anything attractive that I can gain. I don't think that person is useful to me. But as I grow in God, what I start looking for, even if I have seen what I can gain, but I still look for what I can nurture. What I can bring out of that person to make the person a more better person. And that's one of, the, one of the things that Divine Christian Assembly does to all its members. It gives them, or she gives them, a meaningful life. Hallelujah. Divine Christian Assembly gives all our members a meaningful life. So, the younger, if faulty, must be rebuked, not as desirous to find fault with them, but as willing to make the best out of them at every point in time. There is need of much meekness and care in reproving those who deserve reproof. We reprove them in love. The way you would have done to your own brother, the way you would have done to your own sister, the way you would have done to your mother, the way you would have done to your father. You won't watch someone's life or your relative's life be, be destroying and you just close your eyes or you turn the other way. You will make every effort to make sure they become a better person. I'll continue to verse 3. Honor widows who are really widows. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents. For this is good and acceptable before God. Now, she who is really a widow and left alone trusts in God and continues in supplication and prayers night and day. But she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. And these things command that they may be blameless. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So this passage, this part of this chapter, is talking about how we honor true widows. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Relieve them and maintain them. It is the duty of children if their parents are in need and they are able to relieve them to do it to the utmost of their power. So you, as a child, that your mother does not have a husband anymore to support her, and you have everything at your disposal to do so, to help her, do it. That is what is expected of you. Widowhood is a desolate, is a desolate state. But let widows trust in the Lord and continue in prayer. So widows, if you are a widow and you are listening, trust in the Lord and continue in prayers. The Lord will continue to strengthen you in the name of Jesus. So all who live in pleasure are dead while they live. Now, this debt we are talking about here is spiritual debt. So all who live in pleasure are dead while they live. They are dead in trespasses and sins. They are dead in trespasses and sins, all manner of sins. If any men or women do not maintain their poor relations they in effect deny the faith. 
If they spend upon their lust and pleasures, what should maintain their families? They have denied the faith. And the Bible says that they are worse. They are worse. They are worse than unbelievers. They are worse than infidels. If those who profess, who say that Christ is their Lord and Savior, those who, who profess the gospel give way to any corrupt principle or conduct, they are worse than those who do not profess to believe the doctrine of grace. So you try, as a child of God, make sure you do not fall into this category. If you have to help, make sure you do so. Hallelujah. So I move on to verse 9. Do not let a widow under 60, years, under 60 years old be taken into the number and not unless she has been the wife of one man. Well reported for good works. If she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work, but refused the younger widows, for when they have begun to grow wantom against Christ, they desire to marry. Having condemnation because they have cast off their first faith, and besides, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies saying things which they ought not. Therefore, I desire that the younger widows marry, bear children, manage the house, give no opportunity to adversaries, to speak reproachfully, for some have already turned after Satan. If any believing man or woman has widows, let them relieve them. And do not let the church be burdened, that it may relieve those who are really widows. So, everyone brought into the office, brought into any office in the church, should be free from just concession. And many are proper objects of charity, yet ought not to be employed in public services. So the Bible is trying to make us understand here that this category of people should be allowed to go and live their life rightly the way they should or else they will become a problem to the church. Those who would find mercy when they are in distress must, must show mercy when they are in prosperity. And those who show must, most readiness for every good work are most likely to be faithful in whatever is trusted to them. Hallelujah. So, leadership, like I said, begins what? At home. I'm going to state four things that we need to understand before we move into the next session. First thing, as a Christian... As a child of God, you need to first understand that I, I am first a person. I am first a person and I must prioritize my own relationship with God, my personal relationship with God. That is one. Secondly, I am a partner. I am a partner. I must prioritize my relationship with my spouse. For those that are married, you must understand that I am a partner and I must prioritize my relationship with my spouse. Be it a man, be it a woman. Prioritize your relationship with your spouse. Thirdly, I am a parent. For those who are fathers, mothers, or guardians, acting 
in place of parents. I am a parent. I must prioritize my relationship with my children. Fourthly, I am a pastor or a minister of God. I must prioritize my relationship with my ministry. So this covers every aspect, every angle, wherever you want to find yourself. Whenever, at any point in time, you must prioritize. And by the time you find yourself in an office in the house of God, it will be very easy for you to relate with different category of people. Hallelujah. Okay, now let's move on. We'll move on to... We'll move on from verse 17. Let the elders who rule, who rule well, be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all that the rest also may fear. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things without prejudice, doing nothing with partiality. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in other people's sin. Keep yourself pure. No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. So men's sins are clearly evidence, preceding them to judgment. But those of some men follow later. Likewise, the good works of some are clearly evident, and those that are otherwise cannot be eaten. Okay. So, what this passage is trying to make us understand is that we must care. Care must be taken that ministers are maintained. And those who are laborers in this work are worthy of double honor and esteem. It is their just due as much as the reward of the laborer. The apostle charges Timothy solemnly to guard against partiality at any point in time. Guard, he told him to guard against partiality. So we have great need to watch at all times that we do not partake to other men's sins. Keep thyself pure, not only from doing the like thyself, but from countenancing it or any way helping to it in others. Hallelujah. So I pointed out four different um, five different points here in equipping elders first identification identification identify those with character gifts and influence it is the duty of heads or leaders or ministers to identify members with character, gifts, and influence. Then after identifying them, you are expected to separate them. Separation. Set them apart for the work of their calling. You see, in every unit, every department, or every arm of the church that you belong to, you are being washed. 
And that's why you see that a leader can come to you and tell you that you belong here, you belong here, you belong here because they have been watching you over time. And even you yourself that have not taken or that have not noticed or is not even observant, you just have to do what? You just have to follow suit. Set them apart for the work of their calling after you have identified them. Then thirdly, preparation. Ministers of God, leaders, you are expected to equip them with the tools and experience they need. With the tool and experience they need. That is why you will see that a leader will just appoint you or give you an assignment to do in the church. And you will be saying, I'm not, the, I'm not the minister of God. After all, we have ministers in the church. Let them do this. Let them do that. Don't give me this to do. And if you want to help yourself, you will go ahead and do it. But then you will see some members, they will disappear. That day that they are supposed to carry out that assignment, they will disappear. The minister of God is trying to equip you. He is preparing you for a task ahead. They've identified something in your life that they are trying to nurture and build. So when you are given an assignment by your leaders, now I'm referring to you members, If you are given an assignment by your leader, listen and carry it out. It is for your own good. Then fourthly, recognition. Allow the church to affirm their calling. Members, allow the ministers of God or your leaders to allow the church to affirm your calling by carrying out the assignments they've put in your hands. Hallelujah. And lastly, ordination follows. Lay hands on them and ordain them for the work that God has put in their hands or called them to do. And also, this other part, the apostle also charges Timothy to take care of his health as we are not to make our bodies masters so neither slaves, but to use them so that they may be most helpful to us in the service of God. So no matter what you do at any point in time, make sure you take care of yourself physically. Take care of your health. Do everything possible to make sure that you are healthy. As you take care of yourself spiritually, take care of yourself physically. Make sure you are healthy enough to carry out the assignments that has been put in your hands. There are secrets and there are open sins. So men's sin are open before and and going before unto judgment. Some they follow after. God will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and make known the counsels of all arts in the name of Jesus. Now, looking forward to the judgment day, let us all attend to our proper offices. Whatever office you find yourself, whatever responsibility that has been given to you, whatever ministry that you are heading, attend to it properly. Whether in a higher or lower station, attend to it properly. Studying that the name and doctrine of God may never be blasphemed on our account. So whatever assignment that is given to you, at any point in time, wherever, make sure you do it properly. So you're going to say, not under my watch. Not under my watch will the work of God be destroyed. Not under my watch will the work of God be destroyed. 
this work of God that is put in my hands will not be destroyed. This work of God that is put in my hands will not be destroyed. Not under my watch will the work of God be destroyed. Not under my watch will the body of Christ scatter. The body of Christ will continue to remain in unity under my watch in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you as we go on into the rest of this week that the grace of God to practice all that we have heard today, the Lord will give to us in the name of Jesus. The Almighty will continually grant us the wisdom to direct and lead His church in the name of Jesus. God bless you. As you go into this week, your life is more meaningful in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. Of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so
you've had an amazing time just as I have it's been awesome in God's presence and I enjoin you to kindly watch same time next week kindly subscribe to our social media handles on Facebook on Instagram on YouTube at Divine Christian Assembly INC and the Lord will richly bless you in Jesus name please do not also forget to send in your love offering tithes and the Lord will richly bless you in Jesus name and so may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Say I love.